Hi guys, in today's tutorial I'll show you how to create a spinning apps effect in After Effects, where the apps rotate as you scroll the mouse wheel. Let's get started. First of all, you'll need a clip of your mouse performing some actions, like clicking to open the apps menu, and then scrolling the wheel to rotate the applications. Once you've got that video, you'll need PNG images of the applications. You can download them for free from Google, then drag and drop them into the After Effects timeline. Let's scale all the logo layers down to around 10%, or whatever looks best to you, just make sure they're not too large. Once that's done, create a new null object. Make sure the null layer is selected, then hold Ctrl and double-click the Anchor Point tool. This centers the anchor point perfectly in the middle of the layer, which helps keep the rotation and positioning accurate when we animate later. Next align the null object perfectly to the center both horizontally and vertically. Once that's done, select all your logo layers and parent them to the null layer. This means the logos will follow the null's movements, so when we rotate or animate the null, all the logos move together. Make sure to enable 3D on the null and all your logo layers. Next we need to rearrange the logos. To perfectly position them in a circular shape, we'll use an oval shape layer as a guide. Make sure no layers are selected, then select the ellipse tool. Click on fill and set it to none. Then click on stroke and set it to solid. You can choose any color, it doesn't matter, just make sure it's clearly visible in your video. Finally set the stroke size to 10px. To perfectly draw a centered oval shape, enable action save from here. Now from the center, hold Ctrl plus Shift on your keyboard and draw an oval like this. Once that's done, select one of your logo layers and drag it onto the oval, making sure the center of the logo sits right on the edge of the oval. Next select another logo and do the same. Once all your logos are perfectly arranged in a circle, you can disable Action Safe and delete the shape layer since we don't need it anymore. The next step is to 3D track the video to make sure the logos follow the mouse movement. I'll temporarily toggle off the null and all logo layers so we can clearly see the video. First select your original clip with the mouse, then go to the tracker panel, click track camera, and wait for it to finish analyzing. Once the analysis is complete, select some tracking points on the clip. Right-click and choose Create Solid and Camera. Next select all your logos and the null layer, and make sure they are visible again. Drag them above the tracking solid layer, then select the tracking solid layer. Press P on your keyboard to reveal the position property and copy it. Next toggle off the tracking solid layer since we no longer need to see it, and paste the position you just copied onto the null layer. With the null layer selected, press S on your keyboard and scale it until you are happy with the size of your logos. Next reposition the logos wherever you want them to rotate on the screen. With the main setup complete, it's now time to animate the logos and make them follow your hand and mouse movements. The first action is a double click on the mouse. At that moment, I want the logos to appear. Scroll forward to where the double click happens. Now select the null layer, press S to reveal the scale property, and click the stopwatch icon to add a keyframe. Drag that keyframe forward slightly, then set the scale to 0%. Check the animation to see if it's perfectly synced with the finger click. If it's not, adjust the timing until it matches perfectly. First select both scale keyframes and press F9 on the keyboard to easy ease them. Then go to the graph editor, right click here, choose edit speed graph, and create a smooth curve. Now adjust the timing by dragging the keyframes forward or backward until the animation is perfectly synced. Once it looks right, the next step is the rotation. Scroll to the moment where the mouse wheel starts to spin and pause there. Select the null layer and your logo layers, then press R on your keyboard to reveal the rotation properties. We need to animate the Z rotation, so click the Z rotation stopwatch icon to create keyframes on all selected layers. Press U on the keyboard to reveal only the rotation keyframes. Scroll forward to the point where the mouse will stop spinning. Make sure only the null layer is selected, then adjust the Z rotation to switch to the other app. You'll notice that the apps appear upside down. To fix this, we need to keyframe the logo layers as well, but the rotation should go in the opposite direction. In my case, the Z rotation under the null layer is set to plus 100, so on the logo layers, I set all Z rotations to minus 100. Select all the logo layers and set their rotation to minus 100. Now the logos are no longer upside down and are fixed. Quickly check the animation, and once it looks good, we can continue. Scroll to the next spinning moment, and add new Z rotation keyframes on both the null and logo layers. Scroll forward until the mouse spinning stops. Under the null layer, adjust the Z rotation to switch to the next application. 
you'll notice the logos are upside down again. To fix this, do the same as before. Since the null layer Z rotation is plus 193, set the logo layer Z rotations to minus 193. Let's quickly check what we have so far. Nice, everything looks perfect. Now select all the rotation keyframes and press F9 on your keyboard to easy ease them. Open the graph editor and create a smooth curve. Let's check the animation one more time. Great, the animation is much smoother now. The next action is a double click on the mouse to close the applications. Scroll to that point, select the null layer, and add a new scale keyframe. Then scroll forward slightly and set the scale to zero. Open the graph editor and smooth out the scale curve as well. The animation looks good, but it still needs a few final tweaks. I'm not happy with the reveal and disappearing animation. The logo's positions feel too static, so I'll animate them as well. Scroll to the very first scale keyframe on the null layer, and press P on your keyboard to reveal the position property. Click the position stopwatch icon, then press U on your keyboard to reveal all the keyframes. Next drag the position keyframe to align with the second scale keyframe. At the first scale keyframe, move the position slightly downward. If you play the video, you'll see that the logos now reveal from the bottom, which looks much better. Make sure to select the position keyframes and press F9 on the keyboard to easy ease them. Then open the graph editor and create a smooth curve. The animation looks much better now. Let's apply the same effect to the closing animation. Scroll to the last two scale keyframes and add a new position keyframe. Then scroll to the final scale keyframe and drag the Y position downward. Now select those position keyframes and smooth the curve in the graph editor. Everything looks much better. Next I'll add a blur once the logos appear on the screen, the background will become blurry. Scroll to the first scale keyframe again, then go to the layer menu, select new, and choose adjustment layer. Trim the adjustment layer so it starts exactly at the first scale keyframe. Next scroll to the last scale keyframe and trim the end of the adjustment layer to match. Scroll to the beginning of the adjustment layer and rename it blur. Then apply the Gaussian blur effect. At the start of the layer, click the blurriness stopwatch icon to add a keyframe. Next scroll to the second scale keyframe, where the logos are fully revealed, and set the blurriness to around 35. Move the adjustment layer below all your logo layers so that only the background becomes blurry. Then scroll forward to the next scale keyframe. Select the blur layer, press U to reveal the keyframes, and add a new blurriness keyframe there. Finally scroll to the end of the blur layer and set the blurriness back to zero. Let's check the animation. It looks great. Now select all the blurriness keyframes, press F9 to easy ease them, and then go to the graph editor to create a smooth curve. Everything looks perfect so far. I still want to improve the closing animation, so I'll smooth it out by keyframing the opacity of the logo layers. Scroll to the last scale keyframes, select your logo layers, and press T on the keyboard to reveal the opacity. Click the opacity stopwatch icons to add keyframes. Then scroll forward slightly and set the opacity to 0%. This makes the ending much smoother. For the final step, enable motion blur on all the logo layers, and we're done. You can now feel free to add effects to the logo layers, such as shadows, glow, or any other effect that will make this animation look even better. Hope you found this video helpful, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed it, please give it a like.